All right, so what I'm going to do is export a file from within Final Cut Pro. This will work the same in Final Cut Express. Uh, it'll look almost exactly the same. So if you have exported your timeline already, the best thing to do is to import it into um, Final Cut and bring it up as a file so it would be something like this. Um, because what Final Cut's going to do is take your your file, whatever that is, whatever is selected, and it's going to export it. It's usually best to export a, a contiguous file, one that's not pulling from lots of separate uh, images or separate recordings, such as what happens when you uh, create a timeline file. So Take the file that you have imported in, select it, go to File, and then go to Export, and you want to choose QuickTime Conversion. Um, it's going to give you a, a few more options. So it's going to ask you where you want to save it. So I'm just going to call that Test. But here's the, here's the thing. If you want it to be a QuickTime movie, which is what I'm covering today, um, you choose QuickTime Movie, then you choose the options, and that will bring up the Movie Settings box. So it's in the Movie Settings, you have Video, Sound, and then the Internet Streaming. So let's assume we're, we're streaming for the Internet, which is mostly what we do. And the most common setting you want to use is H.264. It's a great compression scheme. Uh, that's the one YouTube wants. So um, that's the one we're going to look at today. We're going to keep the current frame per second, the keyframes. Uh, I usually either choose automatic or every 24 frames. Every 24 frames is the default, so I'm just leaving it there today. Now this is where you can just basically decide how big your final file is going to be, more or less, because it is a, if you think of it as a throughput, so how much data is going through per second? And if it's a relatively short piece for, for YouTube, which would be a two to three to four minute piece, uh, you could go with a higher number here. And YouTube's going to uh, download it. Uh, it's going to convert it for its using its own compression scheme. Um, in general, I would start out at around... 3,000. Now, you really have to do some testing here depending on how big of a file you want in the end. So if it's a 15 to 20 minute piece you're talking about, you better drop it down to 1,000. So, or possibly even less. But this is where you've got to test. And my suggestion is you take a one minute file that's similar to most of the rest of the video, meaning you know, if your video is mostly moving images, then use a moving image during that one minute. Take that one minute selection and then do the multiplication with how many minutes you've got. Hope that makes sense. Uh, when you change this setting, you automatically lose your quality settings because basically what you're doing here is you're, you're setting a quality. And um, optimize for streaming or download, choose whichever one, or CD, DVD, ROM. Streaming is what most folks do these days. All right, we're all good there. Then we're going to go to, just you want to double check these. Uh, if you need to change the size of your export setting, this is where you're going to do it. Make sure these numbers are correct. Uh, you might have to do a little bit of work here, but basically this HD here that I've highlighted in the blue, this is 720p. Both of these, uh, usually this is the HDV codec, the 1440 by 1080 and the 1920 by 1080 is the, uh, is the, what we usually call 1080p. Um, I'm not going to go into the P and the I at this point, but in general, right now, folks are saving things to YouTube at 720p pretty well. Uh, if you've got an SD, your standard def, uh, you want to choose the format that fits. That's another lesson if you don't understand that. So, uh, But I think most of you do. So, anyway, I'm going to leave it on the one that's most common. 
for now. If it is interlaced, you want to deinterlace it here if it's going to be on the web. Uh, if you've shot something with a DV camera, you want to select that. It will deinterlace the source video. And so um, that's less and less of an issue for folks using mo more modern cameras. Now size, and that actually that's just what I did. Filter, generally, I don't use these, but if you needed to do some special effects, I suppose you could do it there, but usually that's not done there. Usually do that ahead. Sound is an interesting thing here. Linear PCM means it's uncompressed, which is going to be pretty big. Um, the best thing for YouTube and for most upload systems is AAC. That's an Apple codec uh, that most online systems understand. You can make it 48, you can make it 44, it really doesn't matter. Stereo, mono, you might save a little bit of size if you choose mono if you don't need stereo. So we're going to choose that. And the settings here, if you are concerned, you can use the best quality. And this is where it really makes a difference here. I usually choose 128. That's a good balance of quality. This is sound, so your size settings are not going to be totally affected by this unless you forget. And if you choose linear PCM, it's going to be big. So remember AAC primarily, and then set your target bit rate. Those are the most important of those uh, of these settings on this screen. Uh, down here, prepare for internet streaming. Yes, we are doing that. So you want to do uh, probably fast start. Compressed header is going to compress the beginning of your file a little bit. So it's not critical these days. Most folks can download things pretty quickly. So those are the three settings. You click OK. Just maybe glance over them, make sure everything looks right first. I'm just hitting the high points on this, but these are the ones that matter. And you click OK. You've already renamed it. Um, and then you click Save, and it will start to crunch. So depending how, how big it is is how long that wall is going to spin. So hope that made sense.